Hello everyone. In this session, we'll discuss computer registers. To design any of the basic computer, we require certain minimum number of registers. So to design our basic computer, today we'll discuss the processor registers which are required for our system. So the first register in our list is PC, program counter. Program counter is of size 12 bits, which holds the address of the next instruction which is to be executed. Next we are having address register AR which is also of size 12 bits. So address register will hold the address of the memory. That means this will point to the memory. Next we are having is IR which is of size 16 bits. IR stands for instruction register and this inst register will hold the instruction code. Then we are having TR. TR is of size 16 bits which stands for temporary register which holds the temporary data generated during certain micro operations carried out. Also it, it is used during the call and return of some subroutines. Then we are having data register which is also of size 16 bits. Now this DR data register will holds the memory operand that means the data which is fetched from the memory will be getting stored into this memory. Uh, which will be getting stored into data register. Then we are having AC accumulator which is of size 16 bits. It is also termed as processor register. That means when we perform any of the micro operations like arithmetic, shift, logic, the in result which is getting generated will be stored into this accumulator and also the data processing will be carried out onto this register only. So this is one of the important register for our basic computer. Then we are having is out R stands for output register which is of size 8 bits. Now this will hold the output character that means the character which we want to send onto our output device would be stored into this particular out R register. Next we are having is INPR register which is of size 8 bits stands for input register. Now this input register will hold input character that means the data which is given input from input device would be stored in this INPR and then it would be transferred to the corresponding register or memory. The next we are having is the important unit without which our computer cannot work that is memory. In our design of basic computer, the memory size what we are considering is 4096 words and each word is of 16 bits. So we can say that the memory size is 4096 cross 16 means 4096 cross 16 bits can be stored into this memory. These are the registers and memory required for our basic computer. But now let us see the arrangement of this, how they are intermutually connected with each other. So for that we need to understand the common bus system of a basic computer. So the common bus system of this basic computer is something like the arrangements of memory and registers. We had seen all these registers and memory. Now these registers and memory are connected to this bus by some arrangement. Let's see one by one. But this before moving to that arrangement all this memory and registers are given certain signals. So starting with memory, memory will have two signals read and write because in memory we can perform only two operations either we can read from memory or we can write to the memory. So read or write. Then we are having AR, PC, DR, and AC. All these four registers will have three signals that is load, increment and clear. So load means it will allow the data to store into this register means it will load the registers. Increment INR. This INR signal will increment the content of the corresponding register. That means if the signal is high on INR, the content of any of this register would be incremented by 1. And the last is clear. So this clear signal will clear the data of that particular register. That means it will make all the bits to be 0. So it will reset the register. Then we are having IR register. 
now ir register is having only one signal that is load because ir need not require any kind of increment or clear operation so it is having only one signal that is load tr will again have all three signals and outer will have one signal load because it will load the data from accumulator during its uh, transferring of data to output device so outer will have only one signal that is load now as you can see INPR do not have any kind of signal like load or increment or clear because in INPR register input register is always connected to the input device because the data coming from input device would be stored in this INPR and it is asynchronous it does not depends on any of the signal now all these registers and memory except INPR are connected to some clock because without the synchronization they cannot work so the clock is provided to this particular registers now if we move further these registers and memory will output the data to bus so they are connected to the bus and again these outputs would be given to bus on some signals because our bus is multiplexed which will be coming into the later part but the one register output of this AR register is given to the memory to point to the memory so this is given as an input part to the memory by means of AR then the input part to this all registers from bus that means memory and address register PC DR then IR TR outer all are having some inputs except two register AC and INPR they cannot get input from the bus so how they would be loaded from where the data will come let us see one by one there is one more unit named as adder and logic unit so alu a computer cannot work without alu it is important part so arithmetic and logic unit so adder and logic that is one part added over here so this adder and logic unit will have three inputs the first input would be coming from data register as you can see when the data register would be transferring to the data to bus it will also transfer the data to adder and logic unit now this adder and logic unit will also get the second input from the accumulator itself as you can see the output of accumulator is given to bus as well as it is given to the adder logic unit and the third input to this adder logic unit would be coming from INPR so the output of INPR is given to this adder and logic unit now this adder and logic unit would be giving its output to accumulator so this is the only way of transferring the data from anywhere to this accumulator these three are the only ways for, by which we can load the accumulator then we are having one more thing that is E. E is a flip-flop bit, extra bit. E stands for extra bit because during certain micro operations like arithmetic micro operations, addition, subtraction, some carry bits or borrow bits are generated. So they would be stored in this E. This E bit will be having that extra bits and it is also used for overflow flags. So this E would be getting the output from adder and logic unit. So this is the general arrangement of our registers and memory. Now as I told you earlier that our bus is multiplexed. So there are three multiplexing signals select lines given to this bus that is S2, S1 and S0. So this S2 and S1 and S0 based on these three select lines any of the output lines from here would be selected. If I provide the select lines to be 0, 1, 1 at that time the corresponding line 3 would be enabled that is the output from data register would be transferred to the bus and that data would be moving on to the bus. So bus is loaded with the content of TR. Similarly, if I provide all the three values for S2, S1 and S0 to be 1, 1, 1, lines decimal value corresponding to it is 7, so memory data would be transferred to bus. Similarly, when I provide 1, address register content would be on the bus, 2, then content of PC would be there on bus, 4, AC, 5, 
instruction register, 6 temporary register. So based on this multiplexing values, the corresponding output of the register would be transferred to the bus. So as you can see, this is the general arrangement of common bus. Let us take one example. We want to transfer the content from memory, from memory to accumulator. As you can see, there is no direct way available. That means if we put the data on bus and it gets loaded to the accumulator. No, you can see there is no input directly from bus to accumulator. So what we can do? So what we are having is the way. The first of all, what we'll do is we'll be loading the bus with the content of memory by providing the select lines to be one, one, one. So on giving this select line inputs, the content of memory would be transferred to the bus. So now the bus will have the data from the memory and it is moving on to the bus. The question is now we need to load it to accumulator. So an intermediary step what we will perform is we will load that data into DR first. Data register. So the bus data would be transferred to DR by enabling the load signal and the data would be loaded into DR. So one intermediate step is performed. Now changing the select lines to be 0, 1, 1, the content of data register would be transferred to the bus. And now while transferring the data to bus, as you can see, I don't, my main point is not that. While transferring the data to the bus, you can see that the data register is also connected to adder and logic unit. So the data from DR has been transferred to adder and logic unit. And this adder and logic unit will transfer this data to accumulator on enabling the load signal of AC. So this is how the data is transferred to memory from memory to accumulator. So this is what is all about common bus system of a basic computer.